Hey data fans, Reed here. Today I'm excited to show you a new technique that I learned how to use leveraging the tile slicer visual that's been developed recently by the core visuals team. So it's one of the new native visuals. So looking in front of us here, the goal that I wanted to achieve was being able to have a toggle like this where we could actually turn on and off inside of a visual, in this case, a comparative metric of an unweighted sales in this example. But I'm using, in this case, just a couple of measures a single value uh, configuration on the slicer and a little bit of design magic inside of the format pane. So it's actually fairly simple to implement this and no bookmarks were used this time. So let's go ahead, hop into Power BI and get started. So to start the conversation, as I mentioned, what I'm leveraging here is the tile slicer for this on the page and with it on, it actually says unweighted on, and then it even actually changes the text to say unweighted off. So it's toggling in and out on this case to then turn on this unweighted sales. So to start with, what I have just is a measure or single value here that will. So to start the conversation, I wanna mention the goal that I was trying to achieve. I wanted a button on the page that could toggle on or off the visual so to, start the, so to start the conversation, what I wanted to build was a toggle button, unweighted on, unweighted off, that would toggle the calculation, in this example, unweighted sales inside of the visual. So with it on, it shows the comparative value in there. With it off, it shows it off. So I'll quickly just mention the design of the visual, though I have talked about this before. All I'm using in this case is a column overlap, using that layout where you can overlap series. So technically there is, two columns in here. I just like the effect of overlapping. A lot of other YouTubers have talked about, you know, basically making a border to kind of have the comparative value with it. But that's all I'm really doing in here. It's been discussed before, but that new option really is the fact that I have a button that toggles this. Now this again is leveraging, if I click into the group here, this is leveraging the tile slicer. So that is on the page, leveraging a field parameter, the comparison toggle, and it even is changing a label from off when it is unclicked to on. So just to mention, the reason that I can do this is if I actually select the slicer and go to the slicer settings, I have single select on, and a new thing that is a feature of the tile slicer is for selection. So single select is required, but you can uncheck a button when you have force uh, selection off. You don't have to clear it or anything else. You can simply just check it on and check it off. So that is the achieved button effect that I want. So I'll start from kind of the pieces that I used to build this out, but all I did was create a field parameter and two special measures for this. So the field parameter itself is unweighted sales. So the actual name that you see here in the visual that is the actual field parameter name is unweighted sales. And I do have a single value special measure that I will get to in a moment, but that is essentially what's toggling it on or off. Now this, is blanking out when this thing doesn't get clicked. So that is simply just a special measure in here that just checks to see, is my slicer label filtered? Now, the way that I'm actually able to get this to show off and then on is I, A, want my comparison toggle, the original one used in the visual, I want that to label unweighted sales. So that is what is used inside of the visual, the comparison toggle in there but my slicer needs a separate label here. So if I click the slicer again, uh, select it, there we go. There is a calculated column that I have in here, which just simply returns unweighted off. Now notice something interesting in here. This does not have the toggle for off and on. There's no option in here for that. So where am I getting the ability to actually have this flip to an on label? So it took a bit of, testing. I even asked some colleagues about this and I was looking at disconnected tables, hidden slicers, a whole bunch of other stuff that would have been complicated. But there's a little bit of magic if I click into this. So inside of this new tile slicer, we have all of the settings that are similar to buttons where we have default hover press selected. Now we have options for, if I go to the selected settings, the value, which is just the label. And additionally below, we have a separate label that can be measure driven. So I'm gonna turn this off. Now, 
it's just unweighted off, unweighted off. So the original label from here is displaying. However, I created a measure that has a label in here for unweighted on. It's just, it's a measure that has text. Now I took that, applied that at the default level. I went to turn label on. The default section, unfortunately, is the only place that you can apply the label. So I put it in here for the label itself and I turned it off on default. And then I went to selected. I turned that same label on and I put that above the value. So technically right now, I'm gonna go ahead Let's make this a little bit bigger other than the format. I'm going to unlock objects. I'm actually going to make this a bit bigger. I technically have both of them showing in the visual, but I have this above value rather than below. So I'm actually showing that label when I click it only on the selected state. It is off for press, hover, default, and mixed. All the others except for selected. So I can only use one measure in this label well for any of the states but I can choose the option of on or off per state. I tried another, a uh, couple of other options to turn the values off or anything else. Um, unfortunately, this toggle of values, if I turn it off here, it turns it off for all of them. So that has to be on. But if you size it appropriately, turn the label on here and you just make it small enough to do that, you get an off and on. That works perfectly. Now I will say I had to do a couple of things in terms of ensuring that for the buttons, uh, I had to change the padding a little bit. Uh, depending on how it's set, they might actually offset just slightly. So play around with its positioning to make sure it matches on or off. But there's technically another label hidden in there. And yes, it is not quite perfect, but the needed effect that I wanted to do of having a label change button that turns on and off a value that I have in a visual didn't take that much time once I knew the pattern to look for. So again, in summary, I created a field parameter which is found from the modeling tab here under fields. Now it's still in preview, but uh, it's essentially a completed feature. And all I did was have one single measure for unweighted sales in there. That's the original thing used in the visual, because again, I want the correct label to show in the visual itself. And then in the slicer, I have a label in here where I just labeled it with unweighted off, just the off state. And then finally, I have that unweighted on label, which is the label level turned on for this button. I come back to here. That is down under the, uh, the button's callout values. Yep. Under selected only, I turned the label on after adding it in the default section. I turned it on here, added it to the well, which will then add it to all of the below and just having it turned on on this one and ensuring that is the position is above rather than below, because then otherwise you wouldn't see it. So it is a couple steps to get there, but still I'd say a fairly elegant and simplistic solution compared to disconnected tables and anything else. And it's a nice way to get, to get that extra added text of on and off for a visual. And I had these grouped, by the way, of course, the um, uh, keep alignment on with some of the background settings under the maintain layer order. And all that, if you place the button inside of the visual, it's one effect that I like to do. Um, and then I turn the header icons off for that. But you can put it anywhere. But overall, I think it's a really cool effect. Um, I don't think it's been done before. But if you've seen it uh, elsewhere, feel free to drop a link in the comments to mention uh, any other blogs that might have done this. But hopefully this is a pattern that you can now use in some of your reports. And one more way that we can leverage the field parameters. And I do hope um, if, the, if anybody from the Power BI Core Visuals team is listening that Maybe we can do some improvements to make this a little easier, um, adding a single value into it. Um, but otherwise, hopefully it's a good takeaway from you. As always, check some of my content here in the upper right. Liking, commenting, and subscribing will continue to help my channel grow. And otherwise, I will see you all in my next video.